For this episode, we are headed down to renowned New York artist Max Gimblet's studio to ask him a few questions and catch him in action. When I left New Zealand, I wasn't an artist. When I became an artist in Canada, I knew straight away that I wanted to be in New York because it was the crossroads of painting, it was where I was going to learn. And I basically got to New York about 10 years too late. And Thomas McCleverly wrote that if I'd got to New York 10 years earlier, 10 years younger, I probably would have been a pop artist. In 1965 in San Francisco I discovered Japanese calligraphy and uh, Carl Jung the same year. Did you I discovered the beat poets too. Mm. Yeah. Did you start Shodo or start calligraphy formally while in San Francisco? I started calligraphy formally. I'm uh, autodidact. I took very few lessons. Mm. I, uh, Noto Nakagawa took me to a Japanese teacher mm. five or six times but I didn't click with her. I found her very demanding and formal. Change of motif. These are motifs. That was Enzo, the circle. This is... Uh... Well, uh, all mine, no mine. Uh, wabi and Sabi, in, in a poverty. Help me understand what that means, both, all of those, I mean, those aesthetic concepts. Well, well you empty the mind and you don't have any mental activity. You operate out of your body in that space in relation to your soul where you're poetic and soulful and you just let it come. Well, Oxherding is, you know, a text like the Beatitudes, like the Psalms. like the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Oxherding is a fundamental spiritual text of total importance. It rings true, it's um, condensed, it's essential. When I did the drawings, and the final version took 10 or 12 years, I got to seven and I was stopped cold. I couldn't do seven, I couldn't do seven or eight. I could do eight, but I couldn't do seven. And I went to three Roshis, a Roshi in Byron Bay in Australia. And I sat on his porch while he had a beer. And I said I was having trouble drawing Oxherding, and he looked at me and he said, in your life? That cleared that up. Then I went to Sogul Postal, Sogul Postal, in uh, Tibetan society one evening, and in the question and answer period after the lecture, I told her I was having trouble with a seven, and she said, anybody in their body will have trouble with seven through ten, there not to be experienced alive. Act in good faith. You've done the first six. Just proceed. But don't expect to know the results. And the third one was Michael Wenger. I asked him uh, in ten whether two figures or one. He said two. Left hand.
but it's the spiritual and instructional part of it that, um, you know, Harkowin used it, amongst other things, with his koan, The Sound of One Hand, to regenerate uh, Renzai Zen when it had dropped away in the 18th century. So Oxherding is uh, surprisingly not known in the West. Hopefully it would become known. It's precious. It's very essential. And it's where poetics meet spiritual practice. It's heightened poetics. It's poetics of meaning. On the count of three, everybody points at the weakest one. On the count of three, everybody of us four points at the weakest one. One, two, three.